and I heard about the woodcutters uh, early, if it was true that there were white people in this group of woodcutters that were being organized, then uh, this was something that really needed support. Uh, anything that, that they wanted, we ought to try to give them because it was uh, the only thing we'd heard of that involved poor and working class whites and blacks getting together over an issue. Everybody talked about that in the South, but nobody had uh, been able to do anything about it, and here it was coming from the people themselves. I think one of the reasons why pulp woodcutters and their unions haven't been studied is because there's no umbrella organization. There's no archive you can go to. A little wet train going no. Get your money, boy. Pay no. Drink whiskey. Drink wine. Have a good time sometime. Work hard today and tomorrow we'll play. Growing up here in South Alabama, my father left the Ku Klux Klan, and his father disowned him, and his brothers never spoke to him again. So even as a small child, I knew how dangerous it was to be raised in the South and have a different point of view. When I got in college and met Dr. King and Mrs. Rosa Parks, uh, I understood what the movement was about. So I joined SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. By the early 70s, we were then beginning to go from the factory in Laurel, Mississippi, to the pulpwood cutters. And that's how we got involved in, with the Gulf Coast Pulpwood Association, James Simmons, and the work with the woodcutters. And your father wanted to bring these two people together, wanted the blacks and the whites to unite against the company. It's practically because a political were, act almost. It, it was a political act. And we were sitting around and suddenly he said, we're going to the South to do a full month woodcutters. And we said, well, I don't know where he got the idea from, you know. I thought, I met this remarkable guy and I think it was 15 years ago and I saw this incredible movie. And there's some, you know, why don't I ask, maybe he'd like to come down South and film the woodcutters. You know, these black and white wives of woodcutters, you know, getting harassed on a picket line, and I contacted him, and he said, sure. We're the, black people are not the enemy, white people are not the enemy, a lot of the pulp woodcutters, the paper companies are the enemy. It's important to understand how the woodcutter organizing fits in with the civil rights movement. They did not want the Deep South to be organized across racial lines because if you can keep the races separated, you can keep wages low, you can keep unions out, and you can make rich people super rich and poor people super poor. That's not right. This is something that I have found out from all over of all the companies and all the poor working class of people are going to have to do, they are going to have to uh, organize themselves and stick together. 